Who says that? Does anybody know? Diana Kukowska, she says it all the time. You'll see her stuff in here. Because why, why wouldn't it be? Right. <laughs> um, Mm -hmm. or um, having an ulterior motive, yeah. you still think of it that way. Yeah. And um, that's why I like what you're saying here, because in fact, I, I really would go with kind of what you're doing too. Is, yeah, like it's a giving thing. Right, so it means it just kind of comes and yeah. it seems natural. It's not this sort of contrived. Yeah, so it doesn't seem, when we think just the term lead generation, so this is helpful, right? Because we're going we're gonna to dispel some of the stuff that we've talked about um, but yeah, it feels inauthentic. It doesn't feel like me. I don't feel like I'm bringing them value. Maybe I have um, an underlying want, you know, that's more important than the conversation that I'm having, which which happens, right? Um, mm -hmm. Terry, what do you think? One, it feels salesy, mm -hmm. like, and and you don't want to, you don't want them to go see my name on their phone and go, huh? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So it's like yeah. finding that, oh. Yeah, you don't, you, know, you don't want them to think negatively about your name when it shows up, right? I actually just got a sales call from a marketing company before this class, which I shouldn't have taken because it totally put me in a bad mindset. I said, I gotta go because I'm teaching a class and this is giving me bad energy. And then he gave me some horrible comments and I was like, okay, so you have a good day. I'm gonna go recenter myself. Um, so I wanted, so this really hit me really hard I know how I've done lead generating, and I'll be totally honest, some of it has just been to avoid things that make me feel uncomfortable for the exact same reasons, reasons that you guys have mentioned, all of you, right? And so I did what I was good at, which is why I'm sitting in front of you today, except when I was at Bold this last spring, and David Long called me on the phone before Bold even started, which was pretty cool, and he said, well, Tam, tell me where some of your limitations are. And so I said, you know, I want to be able to just call people, right? Because there's so much value in that um, as a business person. And he said, well, Tam, you're, you're, when you're lead generating, even if you're calling a for sale by owner or an expired, somebody you don't know, right? Somebody you haven't met, you are really bringing them value. You're a really good agent and you care about people. And those types of clients need you more than the people that you know. So when you call them, know that you're bringing them value. And so I'm gonna to touch on that a little bit, you know, because I wanna emphasize that we can really do like cold call lead generation from an authentic place and know that each one of the agents in here really truly cares about their clients and that's probably why you're sitting in this class um, and that we're really doing them a service by, by calling them. Um, but we're gonna focus a little bit more on, you know, lead generating with the people that we know today. I just wanna emphasize that you can definitely take all of this and apply it and be your authentic self and know that when you're calling people, it really is you giving them value and you're doing a service for them by not allowing them to get caught up by another one of those agents or those discount brokerages that don't really care about them. And they really are just there for the sale and then they never talk to them again. We don't want them to get stuck with those agents or those companies where they don't even really have an agent. So just know you're bringing them value. Um, and lead generation is giving. And so that comes from David Long, who is our bold coach. And I appreciated that so much when he said it. And it was really kind of a game changer and shifted my mindset a lot. So I also write in here, meet people where they are, right? So this is, um, this could be, you're calling, cold calling, right? If they're expired, try to come from, I say this, like come from a place of understanding. You know, if they have resistance to you, come from a place of understanding. I remember when I 
first started six years ago, and I was calling expireds, right? And so like all these agents are calling these expireds, right? And I, this woman picked up the phone, and she was really upset. And she said, how many Keller agents are going to call me today? Because we're bold, right? We're all calling the same people. And I said, you know what? You're right. A lot of agents are probably calling you today. And we had a script for that, right? So I kind of used it a little bit. I said, you know, those are the agents that are doing their job, and they're really great agents. But I can understand that that would be really frustrating for you. And then she kind of like vented on me some more. And I said, you know, and I, I kind of was just trying to come from a place of understanding. And then she hung up the phone on me. She was pretty mad and she hung up the phone. Mm -hmm. And then she called me back five minutes later to apologize because she had sensed like this person understands where I'm coming from. Um, not that that person sold their house with me or sold their house at all, but it was just an example of, okay, I showed this person that I genuinely cared about them. I understood where their frustration was coming from and I connected with them. Now that I'm more experienced, I probably could have sold that person's house. But at the time I was just licensed, didn't know what I was doing, but that was the power of that conversation for me, which was just come from a place of understanding. Meet them where they are, right? Like if you're calling someone or even talking to someone in person and they give you resistance, I just come from a place of understanding and say, you know what, I can understand that. Um, and then we'll talk about how to transition, now that I have learned a little bit more, how to transition those conversations in making them intentional and purposeful. And because you want to, you actually do want to give that person your value, which is your relationship and your ability to get them where they want to go. Um, and make it about them, right? When we, every time we call someone, every time we meet with someone, if we're face to face, just be genuinely interested in what they're saying. And we'll talk a little bit more about that. So this also comes from David Long from Bold, and he really pushed this, and I really appreciated that. We really kind of changed the way we talked about scripting and the way we talked about lead generation um, this last spring, and I think it really helped me, and it really shaped how I've done my business since then, um, and being an intentional and being, and being able to track how I lead generate, even if it's not just calling people, right? There is a way to track and be intentional, and I never did that before because it, to me, I wasn't calling it lead generating, even though it was, because I was getting business. So he said, instead of lead generating, think having conversations. We're just having conversations. We're practicing a way to have conversations. Um, and scripts are, I like to call them guided conversations, um, especially when we're new and we don't know what to say or how to say it or when to say it, and we might get lost or trail off somewhere else, which is definitely me, because I'm a chatty person, so I could like run off into conversations and not be purposeful. Um, I used to get stuck at events talking to only one person because I'd be so like into whatever they were saying. So I always think scripts are a way to have a guided conversation that's intentional, especially if you're at an event um, or if you're one-to-one -one with someone and they don't have to all be guided. We don't always have to be scripting, but scripts I've been able to use and, and I review them and then I find myself saying them in an authentic way where I can, and we'll talk about how to do that too. So I want us to think scripts are good. I'm not saying don't do scripts and don't script practice. I 100% think that we should because we have to master them before they become a part of our authentic selves and we can use them to bring the value that we have for people. But sometimes we kind of have to guide them into that conversation or we'll get lost. Like people like me, I'll end up talking about cats or dogs. Um, and then not, and then I leave and I'm like, shoot, they told me they wanted to sell their house and then I forgot to kind of talk about that um, for us social people. Uh, and I also think that scripts are good for the less social people because they may not know how to have a deeper conversation with someone. How do I connect with someone that I know and I haven't talked to them in a while or I don't know and I, how do I connect with them? How do I let them know that I care about them or like what their goals are? How do I do that? Um, so for those of us that are less social, where do I even start? And those of us that are more social, how do I stay on track, right? Um, the other one I wanna talk about is when we talk about lead generating, having conversations, whether they're, you're calling someone you already know in your database and you're following up with them, or it's someone you don't know, FISBO expired, or you're at an event, uh, or you're doing it face to face with someone, you're at an open house, I really want you guys to start to think that this is an opportunity I get to have to connect with you. And that connection may lead to them buying a house and it may not. But every person knows someone, we know that, right? Everybody knows someone that's gonna buy or sell. So the more relationships we can have and the more people we can connect to, the more opportunities we have to give them our value 
which is a really great experience in the buying and selling of their home, which is a really complex situation with high emotion. Does that all make sense? So I've kind of, we shifted this, right? So think, I'm having conversations. Some of these are guided conversations so that I know how to get them safely to their goal. And these are all opportunities that we get to have to connect. When we're going door knocking, we get to talk to all those people. It's an opportunity to get to know them and learn more information. Uh, we get to meet them at open houses. So these are all opportunities to connect and build new relationships. And of course, we're gonna put those relationships in our command, right? Because that's how we keep track of them. And that's how we have a business, which I wasn't always doing when I first started, right? The business was showing up, but it wasn't trackable, right? So we'll talk some, some more about that. Um, this is some more mindset stuff, some like thoughts that I was just kind of spilling out onto the page. It's to be present where you are and in the moment when you're meeting with someone, you're at an open house, you're on the phone, just be present in the moment. Um, and we talk about this because we say like build a bunker. Have you guys ever heard that, build a bunker? You're lead generating, build a bunker? No, is that like an older Keller Williams thing? Okay. <laughs> so, uh, Diana used to say build a bunker, which is like keep all the distractions out when you're talking to people or following up with your database. Um, so, so I always say, focus on them, be where they are, be unconditional. So be in the moment, don't be distracted with, you know, the uh, amendment that I have to get signed in 30 minutes. Um, you know, so be present in the moment, be with them, and serve unconditionally. And I always say, trust that things will work out, and I think this may bother, does this bother any of you? To serve unconditionally and trust things will work out. Does that bother any of you guys? No. Okay, good. <laughs> so I think I'd have some people that would say, okay, just serve unconditionally and trust that things will work out. How do I build a business off of that? Because um, the first few years of my business, that's kind of how I did it. And I wasn't tracking it. I didn't have a database. I didn't have any tasks set. I was kind of just doing it by the fly. Uh, so I want to say, like, serve unconditionally and trust that things will work out. But we're also going to track it so that we can make sure that we're staying in relation with these people. Right? And just thinking, when you're talking to people, how can I help this person? What value can I give them, right? So when we're talking to people, we're giving our value. And then being in relationship with your community, and we're gonna talk more about this too. This is your neighborhood community. This is your real estate community, broker relations. This is your social media community, because there are, there are, I've been able to have relationships with people I've never met because of social media. Uh, so be in relationship with your community. Be present in your community. So we talk about being present, and that's one of the three parts. So I took a class by David Hoffman. I, he's out of the Kelly Williams, Charlotte, North Carolina. He came up here to Maple Grove. Nicole Sarampa said, hey, Tam, go to this class. And Nicole Sarampa says, to do something, you go do it. Mm -hmm. uh, so he was talking, and he was really inspired. He, he has built his business on relationships. And so if you're looking for someone higher level, right? So I think it's important, like, there's me at this lower level, and then David Hoffman is selling so much real estate. He's helping lots of other people have opportunities for work to sell real estate as well, and he does it all based off relationships. So he is someone to watch if you're interested. Um, he certainly travels the country now to teach on this because his team is doing so well with relationship-based sales. So I took his class, and he said, you've gotta be the friend be the expert and be present. So be present where you are, be present in the community, be the friend, be the expert, be present. And so I wanna go through these and then talk about what does it look like if you're not all three, because you have to be all three. And we'll talk about what that looks like when you're missing one of those three parts. Does that make sense? So he talks about be the friend. So this is, how many of you guys are friends with your clients? Okay, how many of you have friends that are not your clients? <laughs> Okay, perfect. Family, friends, right? Um, you guys have had some of your friends or family that don't use you as a real estate agent, right? I have. Uh, so, so part of this is about being in relationship with them as a friend. This is where we show them that we care, right? So finding out what is important to them. What do they have a family? What's their dreams? What's their job? What's their goals? What's important to them? And certainly if we're talking about housing, what's important to them in housing, right? Uh, communicating their way. Do we all agree that everybody communicates a little bit differently? Yeah, yeah so, so this would be, like as an example, right? Um, I'm texting someone and they never text me back and I just keep texting them, but they don't, they'll call me though, they'll call me. And then I'll text them back. And then they don't text me back. 
So that's me not recognizing that their way of communicating is calling. So then I'm like, okay, this person wants me to call, right? So we, our job is communication. That's like, and there's no such thing really as over communicating unless they say so, right? So it's really finding, okay, I need to be the friend by doing things the way that they want to do them and they receive information and my value in this way, which is maybe they text more, maybe they call more. And, and I'm telling you guys, track this in command. When you have a contact, put in there, prefers to text. When I send my file over to the title company or to a lender, I say, this is the main contact, or these both are very involved, and they, this person likes to text, and this person likes to call, or this person likes to email. So keep track of that information so that when you are following up with them, you're following up with them in a way that they will respond to you, right? So we don't miss that communication with them. Um, I say add value, right? What do we mean by add value? When we're adding value as a friend, what are we doing? Anybody? Paige, you have a thought. <laughs> Giving them information that they uh, uh, that they ask for, you know, without uh, any things that yeah you, you wanting anything back. Yeah, so doing it unconditionally, right? Yeah. So adding value to them, which could mean, hey, will you support me in this adventure, right? If you get someone that's doing sales online, they're a small business owner. Um, maybe you're adding value by just supporting them and expecting nothing in return. You're doing this as a friend, right? Um, and sometimes that is with my clients, let's say, hey, if you're refinancing, I don't necessarily get a return out of this, but let me know, I'll give you an estimate, let you know if it makes sense to do an appraisal. Right, we do that, right? And that's just being a friend. And it's also a little bit of being the expert on that one, but it is like with your friends and your family, you're there for them. If they need to call and talk to someone, you're there. Providing vendors has been a big thing. Yeah, you know, yeah. Stuff. And that's a little bit of being the expert too, right? Yeah. So you're, you have an opportunity to kind of blend those two pieces. Um, understanding their challenges. So with our clients, it's maybe they're doing a housing project or maybe they need to refinance their home because they need to pull money out to pay medical bills or something, right? So kind of understanding, is there a challenge? Is there, is there a way I can help? Is there a solution that I can provide? Is there some kind of value I can bring? Um, being the friend. And so the other part there too was I really don't like the phrase, treat others how you want to be treated, so the golden rule does not apply to Dan. Uh, it really is about, every, every time people say that, I just don't like it. Because I know how I like to be treated, but I can be kind of cold, so other people may not like that at all. Um, <laughs> and I like my space, right? If I'm like upset, I, like, I need space, and other people would not, that would not be the case. So, so for me, it's always thinking with our clients, and you can take this anywhere else, treat others how they want to be treated. So that really takes some objectivity on our part to say, okay, how does my client like to communicate? What's going on in their lives? What's their lifestyle? What are their challenges? Where are they going? You know, Are they gonna take a job somewhere else? Do they need to relocate? What's going on in their life that I can support them with? You know, Because you can really look at it like, okay, is my friend doing this adventure? And then how can I support them in that? Where I may not get anything in return, but how can I support them? Sometimes that looks like um, maybe I can sponsor an event, right? Um, to get them going or post on their stuff, share their things on Facebook, that kind of stuff. So being the friend, the family member support them. Let them know you care. Then we be the expert, right? So the expert is the one who knows the market, right? We know the communities, we know the stats. We can tell them how much their house is worth, right? We can tell them how long it's gonna sell for. I talk about broker relations on here because this is just as important. Uh, in building relationships with other people, right, that are in real estate. So we can talk about people in different states, right? So you can help your friends and your clients talk about information in other states, right? Um, so, and this is also local broker relations because this is gonna help us know intimately, like the Wyzetta market, right? What else is out there? What other offices or agents in this office even when we do our needs and wants? Um, you know, building those broker relationships so we can get insider information, coming soon information, uh, so we can share it with our clients. Economic analysis, so I talk about this because what's the one thing, I used to have my business cards, I used to have, how's the market? I put it on my business cards. It wasn't like a referral thing, it was, how's the market? And everybody that's with my card was like, well yeah, hey, how is the market? Because they wanted them to ask me, but then I had to know. So, uh, so I was talking about that, knowing the market, and then being able to really kind of accurately, in a really helpful way, tell them that information. 
So that's our job, right? We know that. We're supposed to know what the market looks like. Um, be the trusted advisor. So we want to be known to our community, our friends, our family, um, that we are the person that they should go to for real estate questions, right? Um, I put this little tidbit at the bottom, right, just because it's rising tides bring up all boats. Um, and this has so much to do with broker relations, right? So at Keller, we have the culture to kind of not necessarily, you know, bad talk other agents. It really is about how can we collaborate? And I've seen that with other Keller Williams agents, right? When we've got a transaction, how do we collaborate? Be the experts together, get people where we need to go. We collaborate intensely in our office and with other Keller Williams offices when the nature of real estate sales in the past has been pretty competitive, we kind of cutthroat, throw you to the wolves. And it's not really like that anymore, at least not here at Keller, which is why we're all here, right? So rising tide bring up all boats. We can all be the expert, but you want to be the expert that the people you know go to, right? So I talked about this as the friend and as the expert, it's our responsibility to be transparent with them, especially as the expert and to do it softly in the way that means the most to them as their friend, right? So it's telling them what they want to hear, not what they need, or telling them what they need to hear, not what they want to hear. I'm not reading that like I wrote it. Can we all agree to that, right? Um, and we'll go over some scenarios about what happens when we don't do that. So the last one is be present. And so this is the one that I have struggled with the most. And I've definitely seen what happens when I'm not present. And I'll tell you guys more about that. So being present means what? What does that mean when I say be present? Not just be present in the moment, but what does be present mean? Like be present so people know you exist in real estate, right? So we want to make sure that people know we're still doing real estate. We need to be in the community. We need to be on social media. And I talk about doing monthly purposeful contact, focusing on your clients. So this is where being strategic and setting tasks and having plans on how we build and maintain our relationships is important. Because what happens in our personal life, not real estate at all, our friend could live three miles away, but if we don't have a system of responding to them, how much time could go by before we hang out with them, especially when you've got little ones? Like, how long has it been since you saw one of your closest friends? Months. Months, six months. Yeah. They could live three miles away. Mm -hmm. And so sometimes we see our friends who live farther away more than we see our friends who live closer because we're being intentional about seeing them, right? Uh, so that's where it's really important to, you know, be relationship focused, but be really intentional about building those relationships. So that's where. My coach and I have talked about that, Tam. It's like, okay, well, relationships are so important to you, and obviously that's how your business is built, but how are you doing that to make sure you don't let any of them slip through the crack? Whether, I mean, even if they're just personal and they haven't bought or sold a house yet, or they have and they're my clients, how do I make sure that I don't lose track because I'm so busy doing everything else? Um, and so that's where so much of it is, now I have a database, right? And now I'm putting tasks in there, I'm putting notes in there, so I, so I make sure, hey, follow up with so-and-so about this, because otherwise I might forget, and then they may think that I don't care. And we see that happen a lot. Do a lot of you, do any of you see, like, as the older we get, sometimes people feel, they just feel more alone, right? Because we're not seeing our friends, we're not spending time with them, we're so busy with family and kids and our house and work. Uh, so being systematic and, and focused on that, and we'll talk a little bit more about how we can do that. I know we've talked, we talk about that a lot here. Um, being in the community, being active on their social media. So what does that mean when I say be active on their social media, not just yours? Does anybody know what I mean by that? Patrick, what do I mean by that? Uh, show them, show them attention instead of you always wanting something back. So how do I do that? How do uh, I show like commenting them? Commenting on their stuff, yeah. Yeah, so commenting, sharing their posts, mm -hmm. commenting on their, their posts. You may only say, hey, I saw this. Yeah. Yeah, if you follow up with a text or an email about something. Yeah, absolutely. So being active on their social media. Um, I don't know when the little icon didn't pop up there. Um, and I, I talk about this service appointments, growth appointments, friend appointments. So this is something David Hoffman talked about, and I really like that because he does a lot of face-to-face Lead generating. He sets appointments. He goes on four a day. I'm pretty sure he said so. Four face-to-face -face appointments a day, and he sets them up. You know, they're like they're like an hour coffee or lunch or something like that. And that's how he does his lead generation. He doesn't necessarily get on the phone. He's like he's getting on the phone to set up face-to-face. -face. That's just one way to do it, right? Um, but he's very intentional about setting appointments, service appointments, right? This could be with vendors. They could be setting listing, buyer contracts, that kind of stuff. 
growth appointments, profit share, right? Um, meeting with other agents, that kind of stuff. And then you're really just sharing the value of Keller Williams at that point, right? And then friend appointments. Um, service appointments are more like business appointments, right? Um, growth, I think growth and I think business to business appointments too. So I do monthly business to business appointments. I'll meet with my lenders every month. We go have lunch, we, we switch every other month who pays for it. Um, and that's where you can get referrals from different vendors and things like that. It's like building and maintaining that relationship with them. And then friend appointments, sometimes it really is in business, we're just meeting up with our friends. And there's opportunity to kind of slip in, like, yeah, hey, I'm still in real estate. Um, we'll talk a little bit more about that. But that could just mean being intentional about what is my really inner circle. When we talk about who are my number one fans. And then am I making sure that I'm meeting with them face-to-face -face regularly so that they know that I'm still the friend, I'm still the expert, and I'm still present. So I want to talk about what happens when we, so I'm going to go back. What happens, let me know what you guys think, what happens if we are the friend, but we're not the expert, and we are present? What if they're a family member, we're the friend, so like a new agent, this happened to me, right? Um, I was the friend, I was present, but they didn't see me as the expert. Do you think they hired me? They did not hire me. They hired somebody else. And then, um, and they don't want to ruin the friendship with you. Yes, so they may not want to ruin the friendship, right? Um, and that's okay too, all of these things are okay if this isn't, this isn't how this works out, but it just goes to show you, okay, so what if we are the expert and we're present, so there's somebody who is an expert and present everywhere, but <laughs> they're not the friend, right? If they're not the friend, so they don't necessarily know that that person cares, if they know, if, they're, if you're not showing them that you care and you only ever call them quarterly to ask them for business, are they gonna hire you? Maybe. But is it less likely that they're gonna hire you? Because they don't feel like you care. They feel like maybe you're just in it for the sales. Uh, they might hire you, but they're less likely to, right? So then what happens if we are the friend and we're the expert and we're not present? So we are not doing our marketing. We're not calling them regularly. We're not, they're not on a 36 touch. They're we're not on their mind. We're not on their mind. So what happens? This is what happens to me. Let me tell you what happened two weeks ago. <laughs> two weeks ago to me. So I had two people call me in that week. One had listed their house. I didn't even know it was for sale. And uh, we had done some nonprofit work together. She was in the military, so was I. And uh, she messaged me on Facebook and said, hey, we got an offer on our house, and this is what it is. Do you think we should take it? Oh my gosh. <laughs> Uh, so, do they see me as the expert? Yes. Yeah. Do they see me as the friend? Yeah. But they didn't hire me. Why? Because I was not present enough or top of mind enough for her to call me first. So, because we all, you know, this, we all know that what happens, right? A lot of people, the stats are there, hire the first, the, the agent, the first one they talk to, or the one that's there, right? The one who happens to be there. And that's happened to us. I've had people hire me because I happen to be there, and they might have known somebody else who wasn't present. Yeah. So that happened to me. And then I've had other, I've had other people call me. So, so, that so when that happened twice, I talked to my maps coach and I said, Jen, hey man, <laughs> this is what happened. And she said, so do you have a 36 touch? I said, not like I should, not set up the way I should. Am I systematic about it? Nope. And so this is my big focus, is being present. My friends definitely know I'm the friend and they definitely know I'm the expert, but they, I'm not present enough. Right, so in some of this might come from because I've been so far on the side of not wanting to bother people, which I was since I started my business, so it's a challenge I've had, is to be present. Because I am authentic, people know that, right? Um, my coach even had me get testimonials from people, and it's like, it was very clear they knew I cared. I've never had an agent care enough about me, or so much about me. But I wasn't present because part of me is even to this day telling myself that I don't want to bother them with real estate posts or something like that. And there's a way to do it. So the way to do it is for me, it was to be intentional about it, right? Is set a plan and, and stick to it so that I don't let these things go. So that I am the friend, I'm the expert, and I'm present. And when we have all three of those, they're going to be the one you call first. And they're going to refer people to you. Does that all make sense? Mm -hmm. that's, that's like a beautiful thing. Right. Yeah, so, the, so I put in David Hoffman's name on all of it because this is not my like, part of the conversation. <laughs> because I just yeah, hit me so hard. Those mm -hmm. things are off kilter. It's like, right. especially I'm, I'm a newer agent too, and like just thinking back to the early days, those things were off. You know? 
Yep. And I'm like always having to think of it. bring up real estate every mm -hmm. time you're around somebody to like now where people are kind of sheepishly come up. And they're like, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And you're like, yes, like I accomplished like my goal of making sure they know we're not always having to like. Yeah. So, so I and I and so again, like I said, I'm still struggling with being present because the same what we call drunk monkey talk is still that they're still sitting on my shoulder saying the same thing. So this is something I'm actively working on. And we're going to talk a little bit about how I've worked, and that's what this is. This class is really about is kind of some of the things I've done to be more the present, the expert, and uh, the friend. So when I always say give unconditionally, don't expect others to live up to your own expectations of yourself. So when we you know, we plan this whole open house, we do the door knocking, and so much of it, we have to just kind of let go of our expectation of the results of that event, because so much of it is comes from the effort that we put into it. Um, if we plan an event, so much of it, we can really capitalize on the effort before it, and then just know I've given unconditionally, and what happens here happens, and so much of the value comes from the work we do before these things. Um, if we meet with someone, an allied resource, a friend, and a referral doesn't come from it, know that you're building a relationship and trust that the, work, the rest will work out. We just have to be the friend, be the expert, and be present. So this is where I wanna talk about to be really authentic, but I don't want us to do what I've done in the first couple of years of my business, which was to not be intentional, and to not track, not put things down, because at the end of the day, we're a business, and we have to have systems and processes, and there's a way to do this and still be authentic and still bring value to people. Um, so a lot of these are just ideas of what I've done. Um, I set a goal before an event, and this came from my coach, right? She said, okay, Tam, I do a lot of events. And it set a goal before the event, okay, I'm gonna be at this networking event for an hour. How many people do I wanna talk to before that? And I, I need to drop a seat about real estate, and, and we'll talk about how easy that can be and how authentic that can be, and still have conversations that are you know, that building a relationship and then moving on to the next one. Because you're there to like meet people, right? Networking events, so that you don't get stuck like me talking to the same person for an hour. So setting a goal, and then it puts it in your mind, you know, how many, okay, this is how many people I gotta talk to. I wanna, I wanna connect with this many people. Um, setting a time limit, right? So let's say you're at a wedding, but if you wanna meet, you just wanna meet people, right? Um, but then maybe it's only for an hour, and then you can just forget the rest of it and just have a good time. I say this also, set a time limit for events to set expectations if you're doing a one-on-one. -on -one. If it's an allied resource, if it's a friend, if it's a family member, I'll call them and say, hey, do you have an hour? Can I steal an hour of your time? I would just love to, to like people you know but you haven't connected with or you've lost sight of them in your database and say, hey, it's been a long time. I'm so sorry I haven't called you sooner. I'd love to get together. Do you have an hour for coffee? Or do you have an hour for lunch? And then when you meet up with them, you say, Hey, thank you so much for giving me an hour of your time. You know, I'm so excited um, to reconnect or whatever. And you can say it in your own authentic way, right, with each person. Um, and then once you near that hour, you can say, you know, thanks for giving me that hour. I really got to get going. And I, you know, I care about you. Let's follow up again. So you can really be authentic with these, but be intentional so you don't get stuck somewhere for three hours, which is my problem. So, so a lot of these are coming from my experience, right? Then what I've worked on too is tracking this communication and command. So it's like, let's say you're at a networking event and you have conversations with people and you're dropping your real estate nugget, uh, but it doesn't go anywhere. So for me, that's like a tick, right? I'm just like, okay, one. So I do like, I might do like a little zero in my notepad or whatever, I'm just thinking, okay, this is how many people I talk to. And if it's someone that I had a really good connection with, then I, then I make the notes. And then I go back and, you know, if I'm meeting them, hey, it, and a lot of times it's about the app, right? If I'm at a house, hey, like give me your number, I'll text you the art, my app, and then I'll go into command and take a note, right? And so I'm getting better at this, because this is tough for me, right, tracking? Um, and then setting a task for the next time I'm gonna talk to them. This is how we make it systematic and we don't lose these relationships. Um, and then also if you remember, right, or wherever you are, if you're meeting a face-to-face, -face, write down. They like face-to-face, -face, or they don't want a face-to-face, they just want to call or whatever, just keeping track of how they like to communicate so when you follow up, you follow up in a way that they communicate with. Follow up, follow up, follow up, right? This is where we lose most people. This is where I've lost people, right? Not being present. So I'm, I'm talking about this because so this is so important to be able to lead generate quote unquote, have conversations with people in networking in an engaging relationship type of way, but still have a business around it. 
And that's what I've been focusing on, which is um, planning events, getting, getting involved in things, being part of nonprofits, get into your community, be a part of the PTO, plan national night out. There's so many opportunities for you to have so much fun selling real estate and not sitting in an office. I like to move around, right? I got rid of a cushy corporate job sitting because I didn't like to sit. Um, so there's lots of ways to do this, right? Um, setting up one-on-ones, and I say have a monthly automated contact, that's like one thing to do, right? Um, that might be a message on social media. And these items below are just ways that we can do that, right? So if you have to set a task for yourself to say, hey, comment on a social media post, set the task and say, hey, comment on a social media post, because maybe that really means a lot to them. Maybe they have their own small business and you sharing a little blurb about their business is huge for them. Um, schedule a one-on-one, -on -one, people who like to do face-to-face. -face. Get involved with what they're doing, right? If you've got friends that have events, um, get involved with them. Things that you're involved in. Invite them into what you're doing, right? To Best Christmas Ever coming up. I'll be inviting all my clients to that. Get them involved in your life. Build that relationship with your clients, with your friends, with your family. Um, another, I just kind of put some ideas on here. Changes in market conditions. If you know someone's like a C buyer and something changes in the market, you just say, hey, I know you're looking. I know it's going to be a while. I just want to let you know this is what's happening. You know, can't wait for you guys to buy a house in a year or whatever it is, you know? Um, just different ideas. The point, though, is to have something systematic. And we can do a 36 touch and have it really be authentically you. And I have a 36 touch that I created, and I'm in the process of really implementing all out as command is kind of launching some of that stuff too. So if you guys are interested, okay, how do I make a 36 touch me? So it's not just direct mail, call, da 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 da. How do I make it me? Because some of you guys may not be. I'm pretty high social media, right? So yours might not have as much social media or face to face. Um, so if you guys want help with that, definitely come. But make it authentic to you. The idea is that you just have something systematic. If it's systematically setting up face-to-face, -face, systematically set up face-to-face. -face. Track it in command. Be authentic with it, right? I talk about this because... Tim? Yeah? Can I just ask, where do you go for like keeping up on your economic stuff? Because yeah. that can be consuming too, and that's not yeah. a thing. Yeah. But I want to know. Yeah, yeah. So I get so much of it from our team meetings too, but InfoSparks is a big one if it's more Minnesota-based. Um, but yeah, I mean, if it's like a national, like nationally, what is what is what does the U.S. look like for housing? You could certainly ask. I mean, Kevin is always he's always kind of tracking that stuff, right? Um, but InfoSparks is really good. Okay. For, so MinneapolisRealtor.com, the InfoSparks, um, to look at just the Twin Cities, okay. just to look at that. But also, I mean, I encourage you have conversations with people in the office. Say, hey, how are you interpreting what's happening in the market? How is that affecting your business? When you have other agents on the other side of transactions, just say, hey, how's your business doing? How's the market affecting you? And that's gonna give you a sense too, especially if it's in an area that they may know really well and you don't. Mm -hmm. uh, but that's a way to get in relation with those people too, right? Which helps you win multiple offers. Mm -hmm. It helps the transaction go smoothly. Yeah, so, I mean, okay. just start having conversations with the people you know, right? That's great. Okay, thank yeah. you. Yeah, yeah. What were you gonna say? Oh, I was gonna say Minneapolis Association of Realtors and yeah, and then National Association of Realtors as well, because they do the, the national versus the local. Yeah, no, really, right. really high. Yeah, the person that like the yeah. yeah. <laughs> Terry, did you hear that? You can always like NAR too. Mar okay. and NAR, NAR. Okay. If you're like, they'll give you a lot of details. Thank but you. if you're more like a social person, just start asking the people around you, right? Yeah. Uh, you can call agents in different states and say, hey, I'm looking to set up a referral network. Tell me about your market, mm -hmm. right? So this okay. is a way to have. Engaging conversations with people and relationships with people. There's so many options. Because then if you call them and say, hey, how is it affecting your business? And you establish this conversation with them. How many of you guys have gotten, hey, referral request on your uh, Kelly? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, because I'm going to send you a referral just because you said click referral. But if you call that agent and said, hey, you know, I've got a buyer that's, I'm, or I'm building out my referral program. And you call them and just say, how's your market doing? And how is it affecting your business? and then they'll be able to tell you, right? Mm -hmm. How do you feel about the, the market nationally? And you can ask these people, right? Especially if they're, and they're, and they're gonna love that you're looking for their expertise. Um, and then are they gonna be more likely when you say connect with them, and they're like, oh, that's the one that called me, and we had this really great conversation, right? Mm -hmm. So there's a way to do that. Does this all make sense? Yeah. Yeah. Um, these are things I'm working on. And so we talk about this, because have we all noticed this shift, even at Keller in our meetings, 
about talking about getting in relationship with the people that you know. Have we seen a shift? Yeah, so it's who's your database? It's your, your database is your business. And, we've, and they've, Gary Keller's talking about it. And so much of it is because 90% of our business comes from five sources or less, right? Um, so what are yours? What are your sources and how do you focus on them? How do you be in relation authentically and intentionally with those sources? So my sources might be open house, right? It might be allied, meeting up with allied resources or business to business connections, um, you know, whatever yours might be, door knocking, open houses, what are your sources? Um, and I also mean to say dig even deeper and figure out who is, who are your like raving fans? If they're your raving fans, you need to spend more time with your raving fans. Like go over to their house and hang out, bring your kids, get in relationship with those raving fans. I've had clients who've become best friends um, and get, get in relationship with them, like spend time with their families, your raving fans, the ones who refer the most to you, if they're open to that, right? So figure out who are the ones that refer the most to you. And I've had to do that too. Okay, I need to make sure that I am regularly in relationship with these people because they are my biggest fans. They care an awful lot about me to talk about me and they trust what I do. And they keep me present. I don't even have to do it. I put this in here too, like who are your mentors? Because building a relationship with people that you look up to is huge. Um, the business that comes from it, your personal growth that comes from it because your business grows to the extent that you do. So who are the people that are around you? Um, and get in relationship with those people. Call If you call them and say, hey, I want to I wanna be a part of your world. Can I just like, I did this a lot, shadow you and I still shadow people. Um, can I just learn from you like, I would, and I'll just be present in your world and be in relationship with those people? I'll be totally honest, Nicole Sarepa, I've had my eyes on her since I started, right? I'm like, this is a queen, right? So, uh, and Rick Brahma, you know, it's why I joined ALC. It was an opportunity for me to get closer and be in closer relationship to these people who are just doing great things. And I built a relationship, and I'm still trying to build relationships with those people. Because you never know what kind of opportunities that maybe aren't just transactions that are gonna come from it. Does that make sense? I see this the biggest thing if you take away anything today is focus on who's already in your life. So I say focus on who are your raving fans. You already have, when I did, I've done the numbers, right? How many people do I need in my database to make this much money? And then how much money am I losing by not being in relationship with my database? Wow, was that scary. So I'm so busy out here chasing people I don't know when I already know lots of people that I'm not regularly staying in relationship with. I'm not present hire somebody else and then they call me for my advice. <laughs> so uh, I have some of this in here. We've all kind of talked about this, like how do we build rapport? How do we have these conversations when we're out at an event? Um, and some of this is with people we don't know, right? But it's also important like building rapport and being the expert with the people that we do know, right? So when we go into a situation like let's say you're at a family wedding, but you're obviously not the one getting married because it's different, or the wedding party. Um, but how do you like become the expert so we don't get lost in emotion and things like that? These help with that, and they also help in situations where we don't know the people. If we're at a networking event, um, you know, or a party, a gala, something, right? So getting involved. If you're at the community event at the park and all the kids are there and it's like Easter egg hunting, that's an opportunity for you to connect with people in the town, right? And and it could be something as simple as. Like, oh, hey, is it, which one is your, like, I used to do lead generation at the park, and I just never called it that, because I was, sing, you know, I was like, had my son, he's three years old, I'd be at the park, all the moms would be there, and we would just start talking, and then I would naturally, you know, I'd be like, oh, do you do anything for work? No, I'm a stay-at-home mom. Do you work? And I'm like, oh, actually, yeah, I sell real estate, and it's like, that is your opportunity, right? Um, and it really has to be the professional, it's, it's these things, and then also to kind of, you know, transition yourself from just the friend, um, but to build that rapport when I was talking to these people, right? It's, I didn't know it at the time, but it's matching them where they're at, being where they are. We talk about this as kind of some businessy stuff, right? Um, body language, then tonality, then words. So that's where the face-to-face -face becomes so important because it's so much less of what you're saying. It's how you're saying it and what your body looks like when you're saying it. Um, and you can really transition these conversations and, and have intention with them and drop little seeds that you're in real estate and ask them like, oh yeah, I'm in real estate. Um, but I love spending time with my son. Do you know anybody that wants to buy or sell a house? And they may say, well, you know, I don't right now. And I'm like, oh, great. What do you and your kids like to do on the weekends? So it's like just dropping that seed, letting them, letting them know, acknowledge it. Like, yep, she's in real estate. 
or they like to go to the park and they say, hey, would you guys want to meet up like next week this time? What's your phone number, right? And then you're building that relationship with someone. Even at a park, that's so how I used to do it. I'd be at the pool and, you know, having those conversations. Um, does all that make sense? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, so, so this is kind of more of the like, when you're, when you're practicing yourself as you're mirroring and matching, I want it to be authentic, but I always say like when we practice scripting and stuff, this is how we become an expert on this stuff so that we can be our authentic selves and this stuff still shows up. And that's how we be the expert, right? So, so none of this is saying don't script practice, it's saying we have to so that we can show up our authentic selves and not be worried about the details. Mm-hmm. Um, so mirroring and matching, like I said, body language, then tonality, then what words. Um, and I always think this too in my head, I'm, I'm not here to judge, I'm here to coach, right? Um, so anytime people are talking to you, if they share information with you, it's like keep, you know, keep <laughs> the objective face. Um, so that you can be the friend still, but also be the expert, right? And so that they can trust you. Because I think so much of this is people worry, like our family is worried that we're gonna judge them, right? Uh, but that's making sure that we're the expert. And then building rapport with people allows you to be the friend when there are people you don't know. Does that make sense? Yeah. Um, so this is where we really talked a lot more about this board. Who's heard of board? The communication style. So we were talking about it at Bold, and I love that they brought this up. Family occupation recreation dreams, and this is how we can get really intentional with about with how we talk to people. And so it's I've been able to use this. I call it a Ford sandwich. I'm going to bring it up because it comes up later, but it's called a Ford sandwich, which is like what I just shared with you at the park, right? Which is connect with someone. You know, oh, is that your kid? Oh, they, they're they're so nice to my son, or whatever it is. Like I'm at Michael Kors, and I say. Oh, is this the only job you have? You know, or like, do you guys work somewhere else? Are you in college? And I just ask that, right? That's a forward question. And then they're like, no, I really want to do this. And then I'm like, oh, that sounds really great. Um, I'm like, well, I, I sell real estate. If you're ever interested in a real estate career, here's my business card. Every time I go to Michael Kors, there's like new girls working there. I give my card out every single time. Uh, because these girls want more things. They're working in Michael Kors because they want a discount. So I give them my card. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but it really is, I know it sounds silly, but it works, right? Because I'm like, I genuinely want to know, because I do have an opportunity for them. I, I can sell their house, and I am the right person to do the job, because I will care about them, and they'll actually have a relationship afterwards. And it won't just be this, like, uh, salespeople thing. I, mean, I want to change their mindset about people who sell things to them, because it's, we genuinely care. And that's how we're going to keep our industry, right? Otherwise, we're going to lose it um, to the guys with huge investment money, right? We're gonna lose the connection, we're gonna lose the relationship, we're gonna lose our industry. And so so to do that, it's asking open-ended questions. It's asking the forward questions. It's asking about their family. Like whatever context you're in, ask them a question. And they're gonna be these, right? You don't see why on here. I ask myself why all the time, but I don't ask other people, well I do, but then they get defensive, so don't ask why. <laughs> um, who, what, how, where, when, and then the follow-up, go deeper, tell me more, tell me more about that. Uh, but you want to make sure that you're intentional, right? When you're thinking at this event or something, that you're intentional that somewhere in here, I'm going to bring up something about real estate. Because that's my job, right? i got to stay present. But then I can go back into being really authentic because I do have value to bring these people. So asking open-ended questions. This is family. I just put some examples up here, right? Like, how's your family if you're at the park, right? It's, you know, what, are your little, what activities are your kids in, right? And my son's in swimming now, so I spent an awful lot of time in the bleachers or, uh, and so then it's like, okay, who can I talk to? Because I need to talk to someone. And it could be like, I'm at the meet, right? He swims for a matter, you know, maybe a minute and a half total for we're there for four hours, so I gotta do something. Um, and it's, you know, it's talking to them about their families and swimming and stuff, right? And they're like, oh, at some point, the best thing you're gonna ask is occupation. This one works all the time. If you're out at any event with people you know, how's work? Work is really great. Be authentic and really listen to what they're saying, but just know that they're gonna ask it back. And that's literally them inviting you to talk about real estate. And it happens all the time. Um, they'll, say, they'll say, hey Tam, yeah, I'll, I'll say, how's work going? Like, oh, or, you know, I might have followed something on social media, if they got a new job or whatever. If they got a new job, I'll message them on social media and I'll say, hey, how's the new job going? Congratulations. I'm like, oh, it's going so great. How's real estate going? It's going great. I love my job. Do you know anybody that wants to buy or sell a house? Why don't you look into it? Oh, great. Well, I can't wait to hear more about your job. And like to follow it up, right? Um, and you can ask more details and be short with it, right? And be, so you can move on to the next conversation, but really be intentional and still have that connection with someone because you do really care. But if you're at a big event, 
I want to make sure I get to the next person because I will get stuck because I want them to tell me their life story. Um, but then we want to follow up with them. So it's like set, a, set something so it says, hey, it was so good to connect with you at this event. Like let's meet face to face and like let's just chat some more. Um, or and, and you have the opportunity to drop these little seeds of real estate, right? Um, and you'd be surprised at what comes of it. And you can even say, well, yeah, if you're not moving anytime soon, do you know anybody that is? Okay, awesome. And if it's no, it's not this like awkward thing. Just ask them another forward question, right? Or go back to the, to where you were. Um, so what line of work are you in? These are just some examples. How's your job going? Ask what how the company's doing, if they have a business, yeah. Paul, have you done some of this before? Probably naturally, we all kind of do. Yeah. yeah, but we can be really intentional with it, right? Recreation, right? How was your weekend? What do you enjoy doing? That kind of stuff. It's an easy way to open up conversations too. Whenever I have people come into my open house, I, I don't just start talking about real estate right away. I hide my flyers and I'm like, oh, hey, do you guys live around here? You know, Sam was with me. I think it was like, a, it was a question right away. They, they had the answer, it was open-ended, it was not a yes or no. I was like, oh, do you guys live around here? Oh no, well, where'd you guys come from? What, what are you doing in the area? Um, then I can drop a little bit, oh, do you have an agent working with you? You're looking for a house, do you have an agent working with you? Oh, you do, okay, great. Ask them more questions. What are you guys looking for in a house, right? Or at, how's your family? Or what is your family with you? Is all your, all your kids with you? Um, and build that relationship. And if they don't, that's, I mean, so you can see, right? So kind of, a for, I call it a Ford sandwich. Dreams, we're gonna talk about, there's another one too for business people that I use as well. Why this makes sense. Why is it a sandwich? <laughs> uh, a Ford sandwich? Yeah. Yeah, so I'm starting the conversation with asking something. What do you guys like to do for fun? Or when I say, especially when I say, because that's the easiest one is, how's work, right? How's your job going? I heard you got a new job, or how's it going? Oh, it's going really great, how's your job? I love real estate. Are you guys looking to move, buy a house? And then I'm also going to follow it up with another fourth question about them, right? Gotcha. So it's not just like, oh, do you guys know anybody that wants to buy a sell house? Right, okay, great, it was nice to talk to you, next. Right, on either end is questions about that. Right, it's kind of a fork sandwich. And sometimes I'll even, <laughs> like my, like, if it's a business partner, somebody who has a business, I'm like, hey, this is a business call. I'm like, how, how are you doing? Like, is everything good? And, and, then, and, then I'll, and they'll answer that and say, oh, I'm really great too. This is actually a business call. Like, how can I support your business or whatever? Or I was telling people about insights. And hey, do you want to meet up? I want to show you this thing. And then I'd be like, hey, we, you know, I've got this event coming. So you follow it up with another fourth question. Does that make sense? So it's kind of really, but you are being authentic because you have to actively listen to what they're saying. Um, and you're following it up, so it's not just, hey, who do you know wants to buy or sell a house? Okay, great, thanks, bye. And they just feel used, right? They don't feel like the friend. Yeah. So active listening, being present, asking open-ended questions, deeper questions, tell me more, that kind of stuff. Um, this is the big thing when you're in, when you're talking to people. Listen for signs of change. What are signs of change? Baby, somebody moving out, downsizing, uh, divorce, getting married. getting married. Yeah. So those are all signs of change. Um, and those are things that like we want to know, right? If we're going back in and we're like, we've gone to an event and like, okay, yeah, I gotta make sure that I follow up with them because their babies do here or something like that, right? So listening for signs of change because then we want to offer a solution, right? If they're like, oh, I have a baby, it's like, oh, that's awesome. Are you guys looking to like, are you guys looking to move? You know, and sometimes I'll crack a joke. You know, I just say, you know, there's that's one of those many reasons why people move. Are you guys gonna move? And then we be like, well, we weren't really thinking about it, but you know. Maybe, maybe we would. Oh, if you did move and you need more space, where would you go? Like it's an opportunity to have that conversation, right? So listening for signs of change, paraphrase what's being said, that's us showing them that we care, right? Um, offer solutions, right? So then I want to talk about business to business. So it's called FROG instead of FORG. And that's Family Referral Organization Goals. So I put this in here because this is a big focus for me. Um, is business to business contacts and referrals from other businesses. And so this can look like we're like any family question, right? We gotta be careful like how close are you to that vendor so you're not asking a super personal question. Um, yeah. <laughs> so so just be cognizant of what your relationship is to that vendor if you're if you're in a position to ask a family question. But a lot of this I've asked like what is your best referral look like? I would love to support you in your business. And I do this on social media a lot. Um, I'll message them and say, hey, how can I best support you? How can I get clients your way? What kind of clients are you looking for? Uh, and start the conversation that way. And that's when you can say, you know, because if you say, what does your best referral look like? Are they going to ask you back what your best referral might look like? And that's an opportunity for you to share that, right? 
um, giving me a little history on your business, right? What's your elevator pitch? Just getting to know them a little bit more and establishing that relationship with them. Um, do you have any future plans? Where do you want your business to go? How can I help? Those are all really helpful. So prog, for and prog, those are the two that I've used. What was the ROG, sorry? Yeah, yeah. it's family, it's over here. family, referral, organization, goals, or future plans. That's super cool. Or business history. Mm -hmm. Is this your own acronym or is this No. Something? I don't know where I learned it. Uh, I don't know where I learned it. I it it is not mine. Something. Yeah, no, 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 it's That's not mine. Good. <laughs> I always just say, be careful of the family one, right? Just make sure you're in a position to ask about that. Um, but you may, as you build that relationship with them, right? Um, so, I mean, this is such a great opportunity to build a business that's networking because if someone from a lender's office or something refers that client to you, you're pretty much a shoe in, right? Yeah. Um, so, this is really big, and I focus quite a bit of my energy on business to business relationships, and so much of it even that has nothing to do with real estate. I have friends that are in businesses, I'm like, hey, how can I support you? My friend is starting up this, this place called The Office in St. Michael, and it's shared community workspace, right? So I was like, hey, can I do a video at your office? Can I, and have membership there, and then can I do a video there and support you? How can I support you? How can I get people there? Do you want me to share it on bulletin boards? Like, what can I do for you? Um, and you, you'd be surprised at how much that comes back. They're like, wow, they actually care about me and my business, and I care about theirs. So yeah, family, referral, organization goals. Thank you. Yeah, and you can do the same sandwich. Like, follow it up, drop your little seeds with a real estate when it shows up, and then follow back up with a forward question so that you're still, you know, you can continue the conversation so it's not this weird, like, no, no referral. Oh, okay, anyway, um, or leave the conversation. So this is the other one. I think it's so important. There's so many opportunities for us to connect with people, right? So these make sense. And I've, I've given a little bit of information about how I do this on social media. There is a very, like I will, I, I should do this. I will do this. It's my bold talk. I will do this more <laughs> is setting aside, even if it's, if it's 20 minutes of your day to be active on people's social media. That's just a platform I use a lot, Facebook, Instagram. And there's a way to be really systematic with how you do that and still show authenticity. And so um, he was just in town, um, the social agent. Have you guys heard of this guy, Tony Giordano? Yeah. So he wrote a really good book, and I went to his class a couple years ago um, when he was here, and it really changed the way that I was intentional about using social media, because it was such it's such a great outlet to, to connect with people and build relationships without taking a lot of time, but showing them that you support them, and that you care about them, and you're following their life, and it gives you all the information you need to ask forward questions when you can follow up with them later, right? Because uh, you, you can go and look his, on there. Well, I'm mm -hmm. sorry. Go You're good. Uh, did you get his book from this last time? Uh, I don't have the Social Agent 2.0 yet. Okay. Yep. Okay. I do have his book. It's just loaned out to somebody else right now. But it's called The Social Agent okay. by Tony Giordano. And he does. He uses Twitter a lot. I don't use Twitter mm -hmm. a lot. He's a little older than me. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> and younger than me is like more Instagram. But there's definitely, he's very intentional. He's been able to make really high level connections mm -hmm. and sell luxury real estate. He's on the million dollar list. You know, he's on the show um, through Twitter. By connecting with high level people on Twitter, like commenting on their Twitter, building relationships with people on Twitter, that are celebrities and stuff, and then being able to sell them homes. How crazy is that? Wow. Um, I've been able to use this on Instagram and build referral relationships with different agents just by commenting on their Instagram posting on it, like liking their stories and building these relationships with people. And then they'll comment back and be like, hey, how's the Miami market? And they're like, well, I don't know how's Minnesota market's freezing. <laughs> um, and, then, and then we get to that point though where it's like, yeah, if you, you know, it looks like you do a really good job of business or your, your marketing looks amazing. What do you guys use? So it's a really easy way to build relationships, especially referral relationships. Yeah. Do you find yourself, if you're using social media or texting uh, specifically because it's not a conversation that starts and ends in a specific amount of time, mm -hmm. that it takes up a lot of your time? Or do you cut it off at a certain point? How do you do that? Yeah, so that's where my coach is like, okay, so I don't get like stuck doing that, right. is to be really intentional about the time. And, and I actually will be focused on it. So I'll take, even if it's 30 minutes, I'll say, this is 30 minutes, I'm gonna focus on just connecting with people using this medium. And then it means also, okay, well then I have this chunk of time that's for calling, right? So, and you can do it any way you want, but yeah, I mean, it's about being intentional with this time. I guess my problem yeah. is, is, 
they respond three hours later, yep. or five or, hours or later, a day later, or a day later, and yep. then it goes into the next day, the next day, right? Yeah. And then yeah. it's this big conversation yeah. versus an yep. intentional conversation. That's where I'm struggling right now. Right. Yeah. So then we have to kind of be okay. We got to meet them where they are, right? Okay. Um, my rule is to not let it go more than five hours. Like if somebody messages you, and then I'll apologize if it's taking me time. I'm like, hey, sorry, I was just at this appointment. I'm like, oh yeah, no big deal. Um, but I just let them know. I'm like, hey, sorry to get back to you right away. Because they know you're working too. But I think sometimes our friends think we don't work. Right. <laughs> and we are always by our phone. Right. So, um, but I do remind them, I'm like, hey, I was just with somebody, you know, I was with a client or I was at an appointment. Um, sorry, sorry for the delay. Okay, okay. Yeah. I was just gonna add to that. I, going with like the mirror and matching thing, mm -hmm. I'll, I'll do that. Like, I'll be like, yeah, I see your message, but you didn't get back to me for two days. <laughs> yeah. I'll just wait a couple of days to get back. <laughs> Seriously, yeah. <laughs> seriously. Because yeah. you could over-communicate. Like yeah, because it's like, oh, okay, well, I'll play cool through there. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Just saying, like, you don't, have, you don't have to get back to it. You know, right. not, not on those messenger things. Like, but like I do, on email, phone, yeah. like, yes, get back to it. But you make a really good point. That's where we say meet them where they are, right? So I have some clients who, if I don't message them back right away, and they are, they are more high emotion clients. Like, and I can only manage so many of those at the same time. Um, but it is about, it's a matter of, okay, how are they communicating with me? How often? And if it takes me longer, I mean, just don't be bad about it. Just, okay. I just apologize. I just apologize a lot. I don't know. It's just like yourself at the mercy of the court, right? It's just, okay. hey, sorry, like if you have somebody who's like project managers are like this, they want response now. They're used to like everything and they like know what's going on and real estate's not their jam. So like what's going on? They want to know right now. Um, just apologize say, hey, sorry it took you so long. Yeah. And do you, I mean, do you cut it off? Like, this is my time that I'm actually not working. So, I mean, I know, yeah. I, that's that another piece is these yep. are friends. They're not necessarily yep. just clients. So, yeah. but I'm at home with family. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, like time block the, and then okay. respond to them in a certain period of time right. during the day. Right. 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 Yeah. So, okay. so I struggled with that when I started, right? And so I, I, I just stopped answering my phone after a certain time. Okay. Um, and if they questioned me on it, you know, I would say, hey, this is my time with this. Right. Or, hey, this is my time with my family. Okay. Um, and, you, and your family could be anything. It doesn't, you don't have to have right. kids to have a reason to not answer your phone, right. you know? Yeah. Um, I would just say, hey, I'm, I'm out with friends or whatever. And, and I set that expectation with my clients too. I'm like, hey, I'm not gonna answer my phone after 8.30 if it's, unless it's really important. Right. Okay. And sometimes I might, and then when I do make an exception, then they expect it. Mm -hmm. So I have to be careful with that too. But it's very good idea to just set the stage. Yeah, um, but if it's late and if you're doing something, just respond the next day and say, hey, sorry, I was at an event last night. I was really present where I was, okay. right? Okay. Um, and so um, David Hoffman talks about, he responds to people before each meal and then he doesn't otherwise. I was like, wow. Wait, say again? David Hoffman, who uh, I referenced on here, he will respond to people before each meal and then he does not respond outside of that time. So you can set for yourself times to respond mm -hmm. and you can even say, hey, I was like, I'll, I, you know, you can just tell them, say, hey, right. I just, I like to respond to people after my meal or before my meal, or I like to respond at this and this time, and they get used to it. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So that you can start to shape, you know, how you communicate. How like, because some of it, you, you can't just be at the mercy of everyone's court, right? Right. Um, like, whatever, whatever they want, whenever they want. Because, and a lot of us do that, though, because we want to make everybody happy. That's why we're in real estate. Um, but absolutely. <laughs> It's, it's, about, it's about being intentional and uh, and then just say, hey, sorry, yep, I, and I'll even say, hey, sorry I didn't get back to you after seven o'clock is my time with my son. And they're like, oh, okay, I'm so sorry. It's like, oh yeah, no big deal. I just, if I don't respond after seven o'clock, that's why. Right, okay. Yep. And I tell people too, you know, like, hey, you can message me, like if it's on your mind, and I'll respond to you when I wake up or when I'm available. And they're like, oh, okay. You know, so yeah, set the expectation and, and don't feel bad about it. Okay. Uh, but you can say, hey, yeah, sorry, because we're Minnesota, right? We do that. Yeah. And say, hey, yeah, sorry, after 7 o'clock is my, like, family time. Or, hey, I just, hey, sorry to get back to you on Sunday. It's just a day I don't work. Right. So that's me now, right? I'm like, hey, sorry to get back to your email. I just don't work on, I don't work on Sunday, so it's my family day. Or my personal day. And I get that. Except this Sunday, right? Right. <laughs> Except this Sunday. So, right. so there's a way to do all of these things, right? The way to connect, email, calling, face-to-face, -face, snail mail. I just kind of put all these up here because there's ways to have authentic relationships with people where it's not just cold calling or asking for business. And um, when I say face-to-face, -face, I really encourage you guys, like James J. Hill's days is one, um, that's a great opportunity. Um, it's networking events, it's uh, galas, it's going, you know, going to MAR events. Like when we say networking, I mean, 
a local, you know, scavenger hunt, you know, or whatever it is. Like I'm doing ball brawl this weekend at my gym, and I get a lot of business out of my gym, and I'm also judging, and I'm being the friend, I'm being the expert, and I'm being present, right? So, because um, sometimes that might mean, hey, I saw you guys bought a new, like even the people who don't use me, I'm like, hey, how's your new house? You know, and I'm like, hey, if you need anybody, because I just, you know, hey, if you need anyone, any vendors, because like, if I don't get the business, at least I can send it to someone I know, um, and it's still opportunities for me to talk to people. Or I, they're on my social media, I'm like, hey, I saw you guys putting in a new floor, how's the new floor? And um, I'm like, oh, it's really great, how's real estate? Like they ask, and I'll be talking about real estate in the middle of a workout, okay. you know? Um, because I start it with something like, hey, how's your, or they'll start it, because they want to tell me about their housing projects. Um, so that's a nice way to kind of ease into the conversation of real estate is to ask them about what they're doing around their house. People love talking about their housing projects, right? Mm -hmm. And everybody, is, everybody lives somewhere. So there's just so many opportunities and it's really about being intentional and being authentic. Um, we've talked about this a lot and just bringing it up here. So we talk about the language of sales in engaging conversations. And the way that we could really do this is to practice the conversations, scripts, right, that we have. And, and have them and know them, and they always say master them before you make them your own, because you'll start to just say them out loud. I'm not, and I'm not been a person that's been really strict about scripting every day, but my conversations, the longer I've been in business and the better I know these, the better I am at like transitioning someone when they actually need my service, but I'm not good enough about getting them into the right conversation, and then they end up with somebody else, and that's my bad. So it really is about practicing some of these things and when we talk about like, um, this is kind of a class in and of itself probably, uh, we talk about how to use tie downs and do you guys know what tie downs are? You say something like, I've said, I've said a couple of them, like when you say something right or would you agree, you know, how does that sound? Um, to leading things, right, different language patterns. We talk about the Ford and the frog sandwich um, and there's ways to do these to to show people understanding. So I say when we do the scripting, I think the thing that it lacks the most is to kind of like come from the place of understanding of whatever someone is saying to you. We talked about that at Bold quite a bit, right? Mm -hmm. But it's like, say, like acknowledge what they've said. Don't just go through these scripts, like have a real conversation, acknowledge what they've said to you. Um, and then you can continue to kind of like direct the conversation, right? Um, or if they're not interested in real estate at all, you've done your piece and then you can still authentically show them you care and be the friend because they don't need you right now and they can't think of anybody that does. Um, so this is me really encouraging you guys to, to do the scripting and then make it your, authentically you and acknowledge what someone's saying, come from a place of understanding and use the Ford or Frog sandwiches whenever you use, whenever you're doing them. Um, and you can close out conversations that are businessy, right? Even if you're doing expires or Bisbo and close it out with a Ford statement. Um, and then like something quick and easy, don't go into the deeper questions and then say, you know, so that, hey, I care about you, thanks for taking my call or whatever. Um, it's worked for me when I have done cold calling, which is not a lot, when you use these types of patterns, but you're using them in an authentic way and coming from a place of I genuinely care about you and I have value to bring you, right? It's a different type of conversation when you look at it like that. Um, this is my last piece is really what this is all about, relationships, is all really about customer service. And uh, we really are a customer service industry, right? And I know we're doing sales, but for you to get repeat business, your customer service has to be there. So I don't feel like our competitors that are coming in these discount brokerages, I think the customer service isn't there. I've seen it myself. And that will be where we have an edge on them, is the relationship building and the customer service. And everything you do for your clients, is you building a relationship with them. You showing them that you care, you showing them you're the expert and you're present. And does that all make sense? Mm -hmm. Would you guys agree with that? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so much that like we, and I always think like, who are our competitors in customer service? I want you to think about, like when you leave, just think about who, when I go somewhere, maybe it's a restaurant, maybe wherever it is, what businesses have done such a good job of making me have a really good time when I'm there or make me feel really cared about? It could be your, it could be your cleaner, you know, whoever it is. Who are your competitors in customer service? So I just think, find the people who do this really well and see what they're doing. So for me, it was like, okay, David Hoffman is doing this relationship stuff really well. Um, the Sarampas, just because I think Nicole's so great, they do the relationship stuff really well, and their clients really know they care. But there are other companies out there that do this really well, right? We talk about like Netflix, 
they use their artificial intelligence to make it about the person and build the relationship that way, right? This is, a, this is unique to you, and that's their customer service. Um, can you guys think of somebody else who's really good customer service? Well, it's interesting. My daughter was reading a book about this, and like Chick-fil-A, mm -hmm. when anybody's in there, they're, they're, how may I serve you? Or how, they yeah. use a phrase mm -hmm. that is required. Mm -hmm. that my they pleasure say, to serve you. My pleasure. To serve my you. pleasure. Anytime they do, you say yeah. thank you for this, our pleasure, our yeah. pleasure. We'll see you again soon. Or yeah. even quick trip, whenever you leave. Mm -hmm. Looking forward to seeing you. They have a phrase that is like, just always assuming the yeah. relationship. Yeah, so, yeah, wow. and I think we can tell too. You guys have gotten calls. You've been somewhere where the staff isn't happy. Don't call. They don't care about you at all. Yeah. Um, but then you've been to places where they do care about you a lot, right? Like Starbucks, put your names on the cup, and um, you can tell the difference between that service and that's good customer service, and then with people that don't really care. You know, when people people call us all the time with marketing and things like that, and you can tell the ones that really don't they don't care about you at all. They just get right to the business, right? And then I like to throw them off and say, come off your script. <laughs> um, so really it's about, it's really about building relationships. And my goal is for you guys to come away thinking, how do I do this? But be intentional with it and build a business around it. You can do lead generating a different way and, and still have a business and be systematic with it and, and create a business that you could sell someday or that you could re copy to somebody else, right? If somebody came into your world, it wouldn't just be, well, these are all just Tam's relationships. You know, we have, we're nothing without her. If something happened to you, what do you do, right? So, so my goal is that this is totally possible to have a business based off relationships and have a business with it and be systematic with it. Does that make sense? I don't know. Any questions? What do you guys think? This is the first time we've talked about this. This is so good. Cool. Yeah. So, I mean, even yeah, I mean, your PowerPoint is beautiful. Yeah, it is. It's very simplistic. Really? Yeah. yeah, PowerPoint does that for you. But no, but you the icon put happy. it together. <laughs> yeah, you, this is so good because it's stuff we quote unquote know, mm -hmm. but you put it in a way that's oh yeah, oh yeah, yeah. oh yeah. Puts it in perspective. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, it's not any. A lot of the stuff we read, especially like personal development, a lot of it's not stuff we don't know. It's just a matter of how do I implement this, or how do I make it make sense for me anyway. So I am more than welcome to your guys' feedback. Um, let me know what you think, something that should be cut short. We're a little over on time, that's okay. I can adjust that next time. If I have something in here you didn't think was helpful or something I should include in here, that would be more helpful. Um, would it be helpful if sometime we did like a workshop of this? Like let's have conversations, like let's get up and have conversations about this and do a follow up like, mastermind thing where we're just kind of sitting and saying okay let's pretend we're in a conversation and let's use this for our sandwich what does that look like tam mm -hmm. would that be helpful yeah. Yeah. there's something more of a workshop that's like let's put this into play mm -hmm. yeah okay awesome yeah all right super thanks for staying a little bit extra guys and for managing the uh